I'm coming to you from Auckland, New Zealand, based around two large harbours and is a major city in the north of New Zealand's North Island. So you need to pivot your business. 2020 has not really been the year any of us expected it to be. There are businesses out there that I've talked to and they've said that they were expecting to have one of their largest growth years on record and overnight their business has actually changed. Amongst that, obviously there are cash flow situations where the cash is not as readily available as what it was in 2019. So how do you spend your hard earned dollar wisely? And how do you optimize your results for what you're spending? But more importantly, how do you actually avoid those incredibly costly mistakes that you can make by getting things wrong or choosing a partner that is not going to work in alignment with your goals? It is absolutely the minefield of websites, digital, SEO, social media, advertising, Google ads, and more. My first situation, and believe me, I have been in the digital environment for almost 12 years. I've worked in the website environment since I think I calculated it to be the early 90s and I've seen so many things come and go but it was only a few weeks ago as I sat with a client and I realized that their primary goal was to create this thing called a website but ultimately they would not really spoken about any of the other elements that go into forming a communication strategy around what that website is meant to be. So when you look at deciding to take your business online or perhaps you're looking to enhance what you're currently doing in that online space. Do you have a plan? And does that plan support your business and strategic objectives? So let's think about your marketing plan. What are your goals? What are you wanting your digital environment to actually do for you? What are you wanting to focus on? What are you wanting your output to be? And then we come to that customer strategy. The all important end person that we're actually in business to serve. What do they want? What are the emotions attached to their buying objective? What are their key concerns? And how can you alleviate those concerns in the information and the content that you provide to them? And that content may not necessarily be on your website, but it can be in video as well. And then we think about our brand and our brand strategy. And when we look at our brand strategy, we we'll need to consider that are we actually excited by the brand elements that we've created? Do we have consistency amongst our brand? And if I go to your Facebook page versus if I'm on your website or perhaps even I'm on your local business map, do those brands look to be the same business? Have you gone through a change of brand? Or are you planning to do a change of logo to update your logo slightly? Well, all of those things should be considered perhaps before you actually take to doing a new website. Because imagine the waste of money if you're deciding to do a brand refresh, but you're in the same process of getting your website sorted and those activities are not being run in parallel. So really think about what you're doing online. But probably the biggest tip, and it's a tip that I know has saved me a huge amount in my business, is have you actually trademarked your intellectual property? Have you trademarked your business? Have you trademarked your logo? Have you trademarked your strap line? Because imagine once you get to the end of rolling out your website and your content and your Facebook designs and your videos and all those other things to actually realize that you're in breach of somebody else's trademark. 
but as in my situation where I've been um, the holder of my own trademarks for a reasonable point and reasonable period of time, those trademarks have actually protected my brand. Because you would be surprised to find out how many people really like the concept of net branding, be seen, be heard, be found online. And I've used my trademarks to protect my intellectual property. So when it comes to your digital environment, have a plan and a plan that actually backs up your business objectives. As you're delving into your digital strategy, what are the channels that you're going to choose? LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, WhatsApp. They all have a very different purpose. And whilst we all want to be all things to all men, really our audience may only be in a specific place. And it's far easier to actually focus in on one channel and one channel only and do it properly than to try and actually focus in on so many different channels. Your budget will also dictate what channels you can work and play in. And so therefore your budget will also have some form of backing as to where you can be within that environment. But never forget that your own website can be and should be a vital channel for your business because it is, after all, a channel you own, a channel you can monitor, a channel you can check, and a channel that you can actually change to suit how visitors and potential customers are connecting and supporting and absorbing the content that you have provided to them. So think about those channels and spend your money in places that will give you the largest and the best returns. Even today, as we were going through an assessment for a particular client, we were able to look at their Google Analytics. We were able to look at where their social support had come from. We were able to look at how their website was performing. But the thing on top of it, that was one of the key areas that gave us insight as to what was happening was their phone tracking software because we could actually see what was happening in the real environment and was happening to those leads that we were generating. So you can't be all things to everyone and choose the environments that you are going to play in and work in and promote your business in carefully. As we've said, as you choose those channels, one of the things that we know is that a bad landing page will not convert. So what is a bad landing page? Is it purely the layout of that page? Is it attractive? Does it provide the person with what they expected to see? And are there some key call to actions that stand out on the page that allow that user to convert? If those don't exist, your probability of converting on that page is going to be largely reduced. But more important than that, if that particular searcher is looking for a cheap car and they land up on the page that sells BMW, you only have a few seconds to absorb that user and to bring them into your website and to bring them into your content. And if the experience as they land on that page is not the experience that they were expecting from their Google search and from your title tags and from the meta tags and from the expectation around what they were asking when they were searching on Google, you will lose them. So how do you optimize your pages? Track them, check them, monitor them, watch the visual use of those pages, but also look at your analytics to ensure that you are not getting large levels of bounce rates out of those pages. More importantly, 
perhaps look at some of the pages in your infrastructure that are converting and mimic those pages through the pages that are not converting because there is so much information that you will have at your fingertips that you can learn from and improve from. Once we've got our infrastructure sorted and we know where we're going to be promoting our business, let's take a step back and actually consider, do you own those digital assets? You may ask, well, of course I do. I've got a Facebook page and I log into it and I've got my LinkedIn account and I've got all my user, user logins into that account. And yes, I've got a website. But let's face the reality that some businesses actually face. That when it comes to your website, have you got a copy of the backup of that website? Do you have login access to the website? And should you not want to use that particular service provider any longer, can you easily move the admin and that content to another service provider without actually damaging or losing any of your collateral? And if your answer is no to those questions, then you don't own those assets sufficiently to protect your business and to minimize your risk. So the first thing that we would think is that access to your website. Make sure you own those keys to that website kingdom and make sure that you have all levels of access that you need to be able to recover that website should you do. Within my immediate past, I was exposed to some businesses that had lost their website because the developer decided he didn't want to host websites anymore and so he shot the shut the service down, which actually meant that all those websites disappeared. The alternative is a service provider that decided he was no longer going to renew any of the domain names. And so all the domain names expired and therefore the websites were no longer active. So ensure again, and I know I'm repeating this, that you have access to the website and the backups and all the elements of the website that you do need to have. We've largely covered the areas of backups. But in the area of backups, often people will refer to the fact that my service provider takes backups. And perhaps I'm more risk adverse than most. But I know that for every single one of my clients, I keep an extra backup of their environment to ensure that if anything goes wrong, I'm able to recover that website for them. The backups are incredibly important to be able to save you heartache and cost in the long term. And then we come to social media. I'm sure you've met people who say I've got a really active social media page and I sell all my products through social media. But all it takes is one ignorant move to lose that social media account and bam, overnight that business's sales funnel will stop. It only takes that social media platform to believe that you have fallen breach of one of their policies for them to hold back your account for possibly three months where you're not able to advertise. So yep, some of those risks cannot be avoided. But when it comes to minimizing those risks, do you actually have in some area of your business a backup of all the content and collateral that you've ever placed into those environments? And then we consider your domain names. Do you actually own your own domain name? And I ask that question because people often think it's a really stupid question to be asking. But in recent times, I have done a very high level assessment of people's environments and digital environments. And I'd probably say then at least 40% of the cases when we've actually drilled down into the registrar holder and the names on those domain names, the business owners and the business does not feature. And we've gone through a process of sorting that out. But why is it important? because again, it gives you an entitlement to have a discussion around that domain name. And then when it comes to your advertising, yes, you'll have a Google Ads account, 
but are you an admin on that Google Ads account? And if you actually decide to move from one provider to the next provider, are you able to take that Google Ads account with you? Because you've invested in setting up those ads, there's history in those ads, there's statistical evidence in those ads that are all valuable data for your business and you certainly do not want to lose that because that will cost your business time and money. And again, as with your ads, the same holds true for any of your analytics and tagging accounts. Because if you've had a website for say for the last 10 years and you lose your analytic account, it certainly will lose all that historical data that you've built up that can be incredibly valuable when you're making decisions around structure and performance moving forward. And it also allows us to go back in history and compare how you're doing today with the changes that have been made as to how you were doing a year ago or two years ago. And so we head on to our cost tip number four. The website or the purpose of your website. What is the purpose of your website and do you know or have you decided that you're going to find the first person that comes along that looks bright and breezy to create a website for you? And they ask you for some content and so you turn out the content and you give it back to them. And then you wonder why you never see the website and the website never sees the light of day. Well, what was the purpose of the website? Is the purpose of the website to be an online CV representation of who you are? Is the purpose of the website meant to be a brochure type environment that people can go to after you've done a presentation to them? Is the purpose of the website to be an e-commerce environment where you are actively wanting to sell product to people? So what is the purpose of your website? And where on your website do you really want people to be converting? And it's important that you make those decisions because without those decisions being set firm and fast, and obviously decisions can be changed as you learn from your analytics and your data, but without those objectives up front, it's very hard to either navigate out of an environment or navigate to an environment. And so my suggestion is websites shouldn't be a one day thought, but there should be some strategic thinking that goes into play before you actually get to that website being developed. And that leads us on to point number five. Not all websites are the same. And those free website services out there, they're probably not free. And they will most likely cost you a lot more than some of the typical environments that reputable website developers would recommend. So consider the environments that you're going to use. And ultimately, back in step four, consider what the purpose of that website is. Because if you are in a highly competitive industry, you certainly want to be creating an environment that will allow you to be as competitive as what you can and gain the visibility that you deserve for the products and services that you want to sell in an infrastructure that will support that. And not all infrastructures are equal. By the same token, it also depends again on your strategy and where you want to keep that level of technology. Because if you're wanting to consider things such as your website security, then there are some environments that you may not want to go to. But yet there are other environments that will be far more suited to an e-commerce type site. So not all websites are the same. And free is not always free. Remember, your brand is important. And so at the very least, in any of those free environments, you are going to need to upgrade to a certain level of program to remove their signage. And once your website goes live, and yep, that's a day that you want to celebrate, there will be some cleanup work that will need to be done. 
it may be cleanup work that connects all the old links from your old website to the links from your new website and actually that can be my tip 5.1 because at the end of the day if you don't actually pass all the lovely juice that you've created in that old website as you move to a new website you can see a dramatic decrease in your rankings but when you put that website online consider the following you may have heard of tagging but I will choose to break tagging down into an acronym for tag my first step is tracking can you track that website to within an inch of its life can you track who's clicked on the phone button where they came from can you track who's converted on a form can you track who's hit the shopping shopping cart and all that tracking becomes again vital historical information to make informed decisions about the future steps you're going to make as you continue to make and enhance your digital strategy and then we talk about your analytics and in a past slide we spoke about the fact of how important keeping your analytics and ownership of the analytics is to you and your business and as part of my tag acronym analytics on the website is key but it always ensure again that you keep moving it on from infrastructure to infrastructure and you're analyzing that data on a regular basis but don't only analyze the data where are your goals are your goals the number of phone calls are your goals the amount of time people are on your website for are your goals how many pages they viewed on your website because typically if they're viewing a few pages or that on your website for an extended period of time you have engaged them and so are you measuring those goals to ensure that you're increasing in those goals or have you changed a page which has resulted in some of those goals dropping off and again if you're not actually managing and tracking and analyzing what your websites are doing you are potentially wasting money because you could have an ad that's performing that somebody decided to turn off or you could have social media that is leading people to your website but they're not converting and so we've taken decisions in my business where we've looked at an account and we've said under this set of circumstances we can see that we're bringing traffic to a page via social media but we can also see that that traffic is not ready to do a conversion we can see that through a remarketing campaign we are bringing them back and they're spending longer on that page but ultimately if we then go and we look at their google analytics and we look at their google ads account that traffic and that spend is actually converting and so in the, those set of circumstances and for that particular client we are dividing our activities into reach and brand awareness and conversion and actually sourcing conversion that is resulting in sales with a client that is actually now booked up for four months in advance so tag is incredibly important and understanding that data will save you money my first situation and believe me i have been in the digital environment for almost 12 years i've worked in the website environment since i think i calculated it to be the early 90s and i've seen so many things come and go but it was only a few weeks ago as i sat with a client and I realized that their primary goal was to create this thing called a website. But ultimately, they would not really spoken about any of the other elements that go into forming a communication strategy around what that website is meant to be. So when you look at deciding to take your business online, or perhaps you're looking to enhance what you're currently doing in that online space, do you have a plan? And does that plan support your business and strategic objectives? So let's think about your marketing plan. What are your goals? What are you wanting your digital environment to actually do for you? What are you wanting to focus on? What are you wanting your output to be? 
And then we come to that customer strategy. The all important end person that we're actually in business to serve. What do they want? What are the emotions attached to their buying objective? What are their key concerns? And how can you alleviate those concerns in the information and the content that you provide to them? And that content may not necessarily be on your website, but it can be in video as well. And then we think about our brand and our brand strategy. And when we look at our brand strategy, we need to consider that are we actually excited by the brand elements that we've created? Do we have consistency amongst our brand? And if I go to your Facebook page versus if I'm on your website or perhaps even I'm on your local business map, do those brands look to be the same business? Have you gone through a change of brand? Or are you planning to do a change of logo to update your logo slightly? Well, all of those things should be considered perhaps before you actually take to doing a new website. Because imagine the waste of money if you're deciding to do a brand refresh, but you're in the same process of getting your website sorted. And those activities are not being run in parallel. So really think about what you're doing online. But probably the biggest tip, and it's a tip that I know has saved me a huge amount in my business, is have you actually trademarked your intellectual property? Have you trademarked your business? Have you trademarked your logo? Have you trademarked your strap line? Because imagine, once you get to the end of rolling out your website and your content and your Facebook designs and your videos and all those other things, to actually realize that you're in breach of somebody else's trademark. But as in my situation where I've been, um, the holder of my own trademarks for a reasonable point and reasonable period of time, those trademarks have actually protected my brand. Because you would be surprised to find out how many people really like the concept of net branding, be seen, be heard, be found online. And I've used my trademarks to protect my intellectual property. So when it comes to your digital environment, have a plan, and a plan that actually backs up your business objectives. And yes, I've spoken to your marketing plan for the purpose. And again, in all my years of experience, I often sit with business owners who write for the sake of writing. We have copywriters who write because somebody thought that content was a good idea. But at the end of the day, that content doesn't have a purpose. Does it have a purpose to support a business strategy? Does it have a purpose in terms of showing your knowledge and competency? Does it have a purpose that it actually can be delivered by a Google search engine to somebody who has a need and is searching for that, exactly, that exact thing? And once we've looked at the logical purpose behind that content, and we start to think about placing that content on our website or our blog. Well, how's Google and the Google search engines going to interpret that content? And are we actually going to keyword it in an optimum way to ensure that Google will want to serve your content ahead of your competitors? And we know that the level of click dis diminishes the further down a page that we go. So ultimately, if we are going to be in the business of creating continual content, then at the end of the day, you really need to be thinking about what that content should look like, what your content plan is, and what you're going to be doing to optimize that content for Google and for your website. And so all content really needs to support your website and your digital objectives with a clear understanding that you're addressing the needs of your community but never forgetting that you want to support the SEO of your environment both at a local perspective and at a wider perspective. And so 
it comes to the point of integration. Because as we look at the integration around what we're doing online, what is the value of delivering content? What is the value of not extending the content to the audience that may be looking for it? What is the value of creating a social campaign but not potentially bringing them back to where they're able to convert? And so we come back to Net Branding's tagline, which is be seen, be heard, be found online. And those elements are the be seen is all about your website, your brand, connection of your brand across all the multiple instances of those assets that you've elected to place online. It's about your content creation and that content marketing and where you're going to be placing that content that you've created and how you're going to be positioning that content so that people will be able to search for that content and find you. It's about your blogging. But that is your be seen. If you're wanting to take that and extend it beyond the environments that you've placed that, that's where be heard comes in. And when we think about our be heard, those are the social media environments that you would be sharing things to. Those would be the digital advertising strategies that you would have implemented as and refined as we spoke about in a previous point. And that would be your email marketing. Because in all of our strategies, never forget about those people that have connected with your brand, either via an opt-in or via a landing page or via being a past client of your firms. And lastly, we think about Be Found. And Be Found is about providing your content at the exact place that a person is looking for you. And so that could be through your Google advertising strategies, your search engine marketing, your local SEO, and your generic SEO. And at the end of the day, no matter what you're doing, in terms of your online and your digital presence, always keep at the back of your mind, be seen, be heard, be found. Because those three elements need to operate in an interlinked and intertwined way to ensure that you are creating the best integrated digital environment for your business. And so, with that in mind, in my opinion, one of the things that I believe is to actually look at what I call an integrated digital agency. And somebody who truly understands how all of the aspects of your digital environment fit together. That how, when you're looking at an ad, can you adapt a page on your website? How, when looking at a page in your website, can you ascertain what level of traffic is coming through to it? And so integrating the various elements of your digital presence to ensure that they're all working in an optimal fashion for you and your business. But choose a company that suits you and choose a company that suits your environment. And I was at a meeting this morning and the one thing that I said at that meeting is I succeed and I get a real buzz when I know that my clients' businesses are turning around. And I know that over this last six month period, I have gone into businesses where they have been at the point of closing their door. And I know that they have pulled together what it needs to give their businesses the last three months stint to see if they can survive what has been the impact that the global economy has gone through and will still go through. And I know how I feel and how heartwarming it is when I look into the eyes of that business owner and he says, thank you, Kathy, for doing what you have done for my business. And I want you to take a message of thank you back to your team. And so I would urge you to go and find somebody who cares about your business as much as what you do and is focused on ensuring that you're the one that comes out as the winner with a digital infrastructure that you can be proud of. 
and so I would absolutely urge you to find somebody that will align with your values and align with your goals and deliver to you what you need for your business at that point in time irrespective of what that budget is and as we go back to some of those earlier slides that will actively ensure that you own every single element of your digital environment should things not work out as they should now what i'd like to say to you is that that integrated company should actually suit you and your goals it's been a privilege and honor being able to share these tips with you i've taken the liberty of including a qr code with our special on our website 